Many people may be concerned that they're going to hear a little bit of Nathan Oakley. Well, rest your sphincters, my siblings. You are not going to hear so much as a nanosecond of that man's voice. I should warn you that at some point during this video, I will actually bang my elbow, causing me some mild pain. However, to maintain a modicum of suspense, I shan't tell you exactly when that is. After visiting one of Nathan's videos, just to give the obligatory thumbs down, I had a quick look through some of the comments and I found an excellent comment by a chap called Remixer56. Global positioning system technology is based on the assumption that the Earth is a spherical body and relies on a network of satellites in orbit around it. These satellites emit signals, which are picked up by GPS receivers on the ground, allowing users to determine their location with great accuracy. However, if the Earth were actually flat, as some people believe, the GPS system would not function as it does today. The reason for this is that GPS satellites are positioned in a way that assumes the curvature of the Earth. They are arranged in orbits that allow them to cover the entire planet, sending signals to receivers on the ground that are able to triangulate their location based on the time it takes for the signal to travel from the satellite to the receiver. If the Earth were flat, the signals from these satellites would not be able to reach receivers at certain distances or angles, making the GPS system ineffective. In addition, the mathematics used to calculate the GPS coordinates also assumes a spherical Earth. Without this assumption, the calculations would produce inaccurate results. Therefore, GPS technology and its accuracy are dependent on the spherical shape of the Earth and cannot be used for a flat Earth theory. So with excitement, I waited for Nathan's response in anticipation of utter stupidity. Nathan did not let me down. Wrong! GPS uses a flat Cartesian grid. Like all navigation, it's based on flat earth angles to Polaris. You blithering, uneducated, steaming pile of rancid dingo's kidneys with a scientific understanding of a rotting fish head discovered at the bottom of a dumpster full of bin juice. Calling you a chuff nugget just wouldn't cut it, as even a chuff nugget armed with Dunning-Kruger superpower wouldn't have the stupidity to post that tripe without total embarrassment, you complete and utter arse biscuit. Thank goodness I managed to hold that together. So Mr Oakley, you said that like all our, all navigation, GPS is based on flat earth angles to Polaris. There's a couple of big problems with this. The first of which is, how are you gonna find your location if you're south of the equator when Polaris isn't in view? Secondly, GPS satellites don't carry telescopes. How the hell are they gonna see any stars? So how many angles are being used in GPS navigation? None at all. There are a constellation of GPS satellites orbiting the Earth at all times, none of which carry telescopes. Well, they do carry a highly accurate atomic clocks. Therefore, the satellites know the exact time. They also carry data on their orbits. This data is corrected every now and then using ground-based radar. So at all times, each satellite knows exactly where it is and when it is each satellite constantly sends out signals saying this is the time and this is where I am. Those signals propagate out at the speed of light in a cone of radio waves until they're picked up by someone's GPS receiver. Now if your GPS receiver picks up a signal saying I was broadcast at time X and it actually picks up one tenth of a second later, we know that because the radio travels at the speed of light, we're roughly 1,860 miles away from the broadcast point. The satellite has broadcast its position as ephemeris data, where it is around its orbit. If we've only picked up the signal from one GPS satellite, all we know is the time it sent the signal, the time we received that signal, and how far we are from that satellite's point at that moment in time. We haven't got an angle to it. We don't know where we are, just the distance. So we know that one satellite signal is not enough. If we had three signals and we were carrying a calibrated atomic clock, we could work out our position. But I don't tend to have one of those with me. If we receive the signal from four of them, we can ignore the atomic clock and calculate our exact position. Now, as we don't know the angles to any of the satellites, just our distances from at least four known locations, we use trilateration to establish our position, not triangulation. Now unfortunately Mr Oakley, from your position of total fail things are going to go downhill. Everything so far that I've discussed is based on the time taken for the radio signals to travel from the satellite to the GPS receiver. Unfortunately there can be delays. What is also taken into account in the calculations is 
an ionospheric model. Basically, on a sphere shape, how the ionosphere affects the time taken for the radio signals to reach you. And adjustments are made. But wait! My little green friend. There's some bonus fail for you. You mention Cartesian coordinate systems. Well, for those you have an origin. As we're talking about a 3D environment, that would be 0, 0, 0. That origin is the center of mass of the sphere of the Earth. Your position is calculated as a distance from that center of mass in a geode, a sphere-shaped geode. So if we go back to your original comment, Nathan, and take out all the words that are incorrect, what we're left with is that. You couldn't be more incorrect in your comment if you tried. That was funny. Say some more stupid shit. Until next time, stay sensible.